Greetings and welcome to episode 182 of the Words About Games cast, the weekly video game podcast for Words About Games. I'm your host, Amy Alexander, and I'm joined this week by Parag Welsh. Hello. Hello, Parag. Hello. Welcome back. The last time <laughs> I saw you <laughs> was about six years ago when Blizzard and Hong <laughs> Kong had a thing. <laughs> And we've talked about yes. nothing. Blizzard decided to invade Hong Kong. Blizzard invaded Hong Kong. <laughs> oh, man, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. My, it's nothing very exciting at the moment. Mm-hmm. I know I say it every time, but that's because it's still true. Well, this podcast is exciting, I've decided. So you are doing something exciting because you're doing this podcast. <laughs> it's super low energy podcast because... I can't stop yawning. You've got no energy. <laughs> We're just going to be chill. Just all chill. Super. Are we complaining about video games? Relaxed while we complain about video games on the internet, which no one in history has ever done before. Which is historically very chill. Yeah. I, historically, I have been incredibly chill on these podcasts. I've never raised my voice, I've never shouted. I've never ranted. I've I've never like fucked myself in the uh, YouTube algorithm by swearing excessively in the first twenty seconds of a podcast. That's, none of these things have ever happened. I've always been chill. But anyway, I got. I'm I'm going to try and do my high energy podcast introduction. This is the words yeah. about games cast. <laughs> bow, 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 bow. Bow, 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 bow. Every go. week. We discuss five. We discuss five topics centered around games, gaming, and the games industry. Before we leave you with a list of games that are coming out in the course of the next seven days. This week, we discuss more reactions to Blizzard's Hong Kong controversy, the recent shakeups at the top of PlayStation, the harassment being faced by EA community managers over FIFA 20, Brendan Green's comments about a lack of women at his development studio, and a trio of quarterly earnings reports from some AAA developers, because I ran out of news stories. The timestamps are in the description below the video on YouTube, so you know, if you want to skip around this podcast and watch only certain bits or watch the whole thing backwards, you feel free to do that. That sounds like fun. It's going to be a chill podcast, clearly, by the topics. I was looking forward. After we did the BlizzCon thing last week, me and Mr. Moody, I was looking forward to just putting that behind me. I'm sure Blizzard was too. <laughs> hey Hey! Oh, I was like, it's fine. There's three podcasts in a row. If you go to YouTube.com slash Words About Games UK, you go to the podcast tab. Three podcasts in a row. <laughs> About Blizzard. This is going to be the fourth one. In fairness, BlizzCon did just happen. This is true. It was a week ago. It feels so long. <laughs> it feels like such a long time ago that all of this has been happening. But that's just because it's literally been the the like the top news story for four podcasts running. It's not been four weeks because there was a gap where I went to EGX in the middle. The gap is the... This box sign. Should we just, just jump right into it? Sure, sure, sure. All easy, right. Busy, let's get busy. Easy, busy. Hey, let's oh. get busy. You messaged me that, and I, 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 I know. Snorted I... on the bus. <laughs> I, like, I know. I, I just have <laughs> been thinking about that for days. Sorry. Hey, like you've you've seen some of the jokes I've made on this podcast. You know that the bar is non-existent let's be real anyway there's been some reactions to blizzard's hong kong kerfuffle as i wrote uh, the first one um hearthstone developers wish blizzard had handled hong kong controversy differently I'm this is sure from nathan they grace do. <laughs> sure they do this is from nathan grace and over at kotaku who writes nearly a month a month nearly a month nearly a month after hearthstone pro chung blitz chung why? You'd think I would have figured out how to pronounce his name by now. I apologize. Blitz Chung. Blitz Chung. Was suspended for his vocal support of Hong Kong protesters during a Blizzard hosted competitive Hearthstone stream. The ensuing controversy still looms heavily over Blizzard's every move. 
protesters gathered outside BlizzCon last weekend and were largely met with support from convention attendees. The situation has left Hearthstone's developers in a tight spot. During an interview at BlizzCon, Hearthstone game director Ben Lee and creative director Ben Thompson admitted that they wish Blizzard execs had handled the Hong Kong powder keg with more care. The initial decision was too harsh, absolutely, Lee told Kotaku, referencing Blitz Chung's original one-year suspension and loss of prize money. Definitely should have taken more time to consider something more reasonable, but we can't take that back. As for where Thompson and Lee specifically fall in their reaction to Blizzard's ultimate decision to walk back Blitz Chung's suspension but to continue forbidding political commentary during events, they largely feel like it's the right way to go. Quote, of course, I celebrate, as we all do to some extent or another, free speech, <clears throat> said Thompson. You should be able to say what it is you want to say. I also understand what J. Allen Brack himself addressed in his own internal communications and later on to the world at large, which is that being able to speak your mind and say how you feel from a personal level is always and should always be a welcome thing. Doing so from a platform very much not your own and done from a voice not your own to take control, so to speak, or on behalf of another... I got dizzy in that sentence, <laughs> is not is not free speech. That is on behalf of something that's not yours to do with. So Thompson said, while Hearthstone pros and streamers might be forbidden from expressing those sorts of viewpoints during events, they're free to do so on their own streams. Quote, our Twitch streamers and content creators asked, what if I want to talk about this? This being a vague example. I've got things to say. And our answer was always, say it, do it, it's your Twitch stream, it's yours to do with what you will. That's always something we want to support and celebrate. This stance might not please fans who feel that players should have a right to speak out regardless of forum or station, or who point out that Blizzard's games have traditionally dealt with political themes like war, peace and inclusion. But Thompson said that he feels like Hearthstone is a home away from home, where players should leave their world outside and join this world inside, where all are welcome. <laughs> I, get, I I didn't really read this heavily before I like I just sort of copy pasted relevant bits, skimmed it. I got a bit dizzy in that paragraph in the middle where he was doing some very good linguistical gymnastics. What are, what are your thoughts on this 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 one this statement, Patrick? Uh, the, 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 this statement particularly. Well, I think it's a bit disingenuous to say you could say whatever you want on your Twitch platform so long as you don't say it on our platform because. The whole point is that you're going to get a lot more views on the official Blizzard channels than you are on your own. Like, there's an inherent power dynamic there. Like, you know, I can say free Hong Kong to a cat, and, you know, that that's not going to have the same impact as tens of thousands of people watching a stream. Oh, know? yeah. <laughs> oh, the second thing is the, is the last paragraph gets a little bit both sidesy, and it's sort of... I, I mean, I get... I, I get... I mean, it's probably a larger conversation than this and Blizzard is like how much, how much politics or discussion of politics do we want in the game space? Yeah. Because as soon as you start allowing that kind of thing, you know it's going to be weaponized by bad faith actors, you know, the shittiest people possible. As soon as you say free Hong Kong, someone's going to come and say, oh, why can't I come in here and say how I want to bring back slavery? You know, that, <laughs> like that kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. I get I get what they're saying because they can't they can't or they're unwilling to come out and say well the reason why you can't come out and say you know racist sexist homophobic stuff is because we don't want you and said they had to do sort of like the both sides you know all houses welcome you know we're all a family yada 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 politics at the door because they can't afford to piss people off which you know it's it's either you ban all politics or you have to actually go in and moderate it and sort of make a stance which guess what corporate america doesn't want to do this is true so. <sighs> yeah like yeah we are sort of leaning like we're we're moving like away from free speech in terms of like the hong kong protests and blitz junk and now we're sort of very so slightly sort of leaning into just yeah everything <laughs> like, yeah i mean that blizzard stance is we don't want to talk about politics because that's a whole can of worms we don't want to discuss which is i mean it's i'd say it's understandable it's sniveling and cowardly but it's i mean understandable yeah. where they where they're coming from well the company's president makes a um makes a apology speech live on the blizzcon blizzcon stage while wearing mm -hmm. a pride badge on his color 
<laughs> Which it's it's kind of a different thing because you know, I think this again it's try, it's trying to both sides the issue by suggesting that oh well Blizzard supports LGBT rights and it's like well that's you only think that's political if you think that's controversial and I sort of think that's issue settled but maybe that's me I think the the fact that he went out and made a statement and took responsibility and then you know flat out said well we're not reversing the ban it's like well you're not apologizing then you're just that's not an apology you're not taking responsibility for it like you're not throwing yourself in the sword you're not suffering anyway if you'd gone out there and resigned that's an apology that would have been it's probably a bit extreme <laughs> but it's you know yeah uh, no one would have did, would have doubted his sincerity i mean that would have been the accountability that he talked about yeah. when he was up on stage or like that i mean i think the thing that's that he's getting blizzard in general in him specifically, but Blizzard in general is going to get hammered by for the foreseeable future is the part where he said, our actions will speak louder than our words, because now every action is like, well... Yes. <laughs> except their action was to do nothing. Yeah, except he didn't do anything, so... Yeah. <laughs> in fact, more shit came out afterwards, yeah. like after you'd made that speech, so your action was in almost like the opposite of the words that you used. It's weird. Yeah. It's almost like, like you would... yeah. Like this statement by uh, Ben and Ben. It's it it's it's the it's just the official party line. You know, yeah, it's, like it, you it's, can... it's at least it's at least got some clarity to it. You know, the initial decision was too harsh. We support free speech, but yada yada yada. Don't don't use your platform for politics. Whereas you know the whole point of that of the fact is that your platform is bigger than my platform. So yeah. Like I want to use your platform for, for politics. Like you know, I can, you know, it, you know, it, it doesn't matter if my audience is like you know pigeons. <laughs> you get a real animal thing like, going. Yeah, on. sure, I could go on my Twitch channel and say free hog hog, except I don't have a Twitch channel, and if I did, <laughs> I would have no subscribers. I mean, you can come on my channel and say free Hong Kong. We've said it a bunch of times in the last month, and so far we haven't been deplatformed or anything. So you know, free Hong Kong, right? <laughs> There are certain phrases that are in this, in in the quotes from Ben and Ben from Hearthstone. <laughs> which, they almost certainly got briefed on this. Like, yeah, which I'll repeat. Like, like someone in their PR department probably printed this off out verbatim and handed it around to to Blizzard's management. Which, I mean, this it might well be that this is just sort of wrapping up the issue. I, the more I think on this, the more I think that I don't really know what more realistically, given what Blizzard, what Activision Blizzard is, what more they could really do at this point that's going to actually res like resolve the issue. <laughs> I think we talked about it on that very first podcast. Yeah. Um, where it was kind of like, as soon as they did the thing, they put themselves in an, situ in an unwinnable like situation. <laughs> Like yeah, like do we want Blizzard to just say yeah, free Hong Kong, you know, fuck the Chinese government and pull out of Asia? Like, is anyone realistically expecting that to happen? I'm like, realistically expecting I, it. I don't know how they can solve the issue except through the way they're trying to solve the issue, which is to announce Diablo Four and then pretend it's not an issue anymore. That's probably the the best they can ex expect. I think they're probably handling it as well as they can. Yeah, under the circumstances. Unfortunately, under the circumstances. I feel like it's this is going to be a stink that is going to stick around for a while. Because, you know, no one's going to resign over it. Oh, God, no. Yeah. Who would resign? Like, the thing is, it's like, that the people at the top don't care because they're making the money and they're the ones who make these decisions. They're making money for the company, right? Like, that's what it's all about because late-stage capitalism is the best... It's, yay let's yeah. move on <laughs> and yeah i mean i was talking to people because oh. i went i went up to glasgow to see blizzcon with people and a lot of people were just saying i kind of just want to stop talking about you know? <laughs> try, try yeah. having a podcast about video games <laughs> uh, yeah it's a we'll try on, which was basically my response so i'm sure the people of hong kong would like to stop talking about I'm oh. sure the people of hong kong would mm -hmm. love to stop having to you do know. the protests in the first place so then i started asking it's like well you know i don't again i don't want to both sides the issue too much or play or play devil's advocate but what exactly is it that you know, us sjw troublemakers are actually asking blizzard to do at this point 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I got lost. I got lost running around in circles week th- in week three. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm just here to react to the things that happen in the video games. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what this podcast is. Anyone who mistakes this podcast for a news podcast is. You made a horrible mistake <laughs> coming here um, for your news, but like, yeah, it's like the, it's the, it's always that. That's always the part of the conversation, and it has been for the entire sort of last month, where it's like, well, what do they do? Nobody knows. Blizzard don't even know because yeah, they've done a thing. It's you know, it's easy to say, well, be less shitty. It's like you don't hear about the probably, you know, three hundred sixty-four days out of it where Blizzard isn't being shitty. Uh, you know, it doesn't make it doesn't make news. No, no, it doesn't. It would be nice if it did, but no. Make a donation to ACLU or something. Uh, I'm sure there's there's more in the pipeline because this doesn't seem to be going anyway. Right. Um, I think they hope it does. I honestly uh, think that that is that seems that is to have been their their modus operandi since this first became a controversy. And it's like shit. If we just batten down the hatches and pretend like this isn't an issue. Maybe people will stop talking about it. Because they probably will. We won't, though, because Overwatch game director Jeff Kaplan disagrees with Blitz showing suspension. This is from Nicole Carpenter over at Polygon, who writes, Blizzard's top developer for Overwatch, Jeff Kaplan, said the suspension handed to a Hearthstone pro who voiced support for Hong Kong protesters in an official stream should be reduced more or eliminated in an interview with the Washington Post. Uh, yep. At, Bl- at BlizzCon, Blizzard President J. Allen Brack apologized for its quick decision regarding Blitz, Chung, and others, but still said the company will not revert his punishment completely. Fans disagreed vehemently. Apparently, Kaplan, Overwatch's game director, is with them. In an interview with the Washington Post, Kaplan said he was relieved to hear Blitz, Chung's suspension was reduced, but still thinks the punishment should be reduced more or eliminated. Kaplan is not involved with the Hearthstone team, but is the first top-level Blizzard developer to speak openly about reverting Blitzstrung suspension, according to the Washington Post. Quote, I'm obviously a huge supporter of free speech. Obviously. It's something that's very important to me. It got to me personally. I think the punishment was too harsh and I was, harsh and I was greatly relieved when they gave his money back. I think that was extremely important. Kaplan told the Washington Post that there are many differing opinions among the Overwatch team regarding Blitzchung's suspension. Top level okay. Blizzard man says free Hong Kong. <laughs> well, I mean, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Cause he I doesn't. Actually look at the word. Free. What he actually <laughs> yeah. says is, I'm obviously a huge supporter of free speech. It's something that's very important to me. Blah, 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 blah. I think the punishment was too harsh. It was great relief when they gave his money back. It's pretty much exactly the same as the last night like, in terms of right. Like, content it's the same like, fucking thing <laughs> i kind of want to call out polygon for this for the headline saying overwatch director disagrees with blitz chung's suspension well no he doesn't he, you know doesn't seem to have a problem with the suspension he just thinks the initial uh punishment was too harsh and still it's... thinks the punishment should be reduced more or eliminated which you know it it's kind of safe for him to say that in a way because his game is overwatch which you know is a completely different game but the when I once I read through this and I got to the I got to the the main quote. I'm a big supporter of free speech. Like it's like, wait, is this the same thing as Ben and Ben said? Like it more or less is, yeah, right? So it's well going back to it, of course I celebrate as we all do to one extent free speech, said Thompson. <laughs> and then Jeff's like, I'm obviously a huge supporter of free speech. Obviously. Again, I just Expected this was a memo that was just handed around to Blizzard's management. Yeah, it's like okay, we need to tackle this in a different way. So let's get a few high-level guys out there at BlizzCon and afterwards and whatever talking about how great free speech is. And yeah, maybe I've just been doing this too long, like to just sort of approaching this and going cynical, 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 and just pointing at this all like cynical. This is all cynical bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> When did yeah, I, s- I mean, it feels it feels like cynical bollocks, and I think this is kind of the problem people have with Blizzard, or 
well, they'll see the, seem to see the problem people have with Blizzard more generally. I'm not you know, a big Blizzard fan, so I can't speak for them. But that it seems to be that under Activision Blizzard, people seem to be shocked and surprised that they're acting like you know a big capitalist a, monolithic a company. A big it's shitty like, oh, company. How, how dare they say one thing and mean another? <laughs> oh, shit. Well, I'm thinking it's more, how dare you say one thing and do another? Um, but yeah, it is, it is the... What's the good word to use here? It is the conundrum of these big, huge AAA publishers, just in general, I mean, probably not even with just Activision Blizzard, where it's like they exist to make all of the money in the world <laughs> and they yeah, will do Blizzard everything is, they can. Blizzard is not your friend. This is the lesson people need to learn is that all video game companies are evil apart from Nintendo. That's a joke, obviously. <laughs> obviously. I can see no... I can see no Nintendo paraphernalia anywhere on your video screen. Not at all. Where's my mic? <laughs> you can see a little green nose sticking out from behind you or a Nintendo Switch or Joy-Con. Yoshi. Yoshi. We love Yoshi. But, um, yeah, like, no video game publisher is, like, yeah, is your friend. They, they, they'll... Yeah. Well I don't think we need to go around saying Blizzard is tear devil because it's still fundamentally like human beings working there, trying to work there, doing the best they can. I'm sure they care very deeply about the work they are doing. Yeah. But let's not, you know, what are what what are we expecting? What do people? How do people expect Blizzard to act? Again, it's what are we expecting them to do? That is a good question. I don't know an answer to I that. I believe I believe we're about to start critiquing capitalism here. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we continue down this road. So instead, let's just do Yeah, right. Well yeah, that's my point really, is that your problem isn't with Blizzard, your problem is with the way the video game industry is operating, which is really a criticism of capitalism. Yeah. I mean I've never denied the fact that and, I think capitalism And probably stinks. beyond the scope of the podcast. So. <laughs> yeah, this is sometimes I this is sometimes where I have to reel people back in and just go, This is the video games. Video games. Oh, we have to <laughs> radicalize the young people. No. No. Let me just read from the Communist Manifesto. Just a little bit. It's it's fine. It's fine. Anyway, there's more blizzard. Blizzard blasted by U.S. congressman for letting racism fester in World of Warcraft. This is from Natalie Clayton over at Rock Paper Shotgun, who writes, Last week, Blizzard once again returned to Anaheim for BlizzCon 2019, but rather than welcoming Blizzard to his city for their annual convention, Rep Rep Representative Lou Correa, a Democrat congressman for, for Anaheim, California, accused them of fostering online radicalization in World of Warcraft. Less than a month after finding themselves in the US government's crosshairs for their mishandling of a Hearthstone Championship protest, Blizzard's handling of fraught politics may once again have landed the studio in hot water. As Vice Gaming reports, Correa's post includes a screenshot of a player named Horrigan dressed in white robes and hood, flanked by two darker-skinned human players on their knees. If that's not bleeding obvious enough, the robed goon is captured saying, Next stop, Charlottesville. The Virginia town shows up for 2017's infamous Unite the Right rally, where anti-racist pr protester Heather Hare was killed. From the replies to Korea's tweet, it sounds like Horrigan and his guild Enclave are known troublemakers both on their home WoW server and other online games. While not openly racist in recruitment posts, limiting themselves to aggressively try-hard language, they've been known to spew bigotry over the server for the better part of a decade, longer even if you count their time back in Planetside. It sounds like fellow WoWgoers have frequently reported the guild and its members to Blizzard who tend to simply slap a temporary ban of a few days. But in a Reddit thread from two months ago, one fellow server goer wrote that Horrigan and his guild have grown too savvy for even these temporary measures. Quote, They know they are being reported now, so they changed to calling black people orcs so they can avoid being reported for saying the n-word. I was in the guild for two days and spent most of it just reporting guys to Blizzard for it. End quote. Since Congressman Correa's screenshot was taken during a server-wide Halloween event, some guild members have distanced, distanced themselves from Horrigan. Vice reports that leaked audio from a post-party voice call suggested Horrigan is claiming folk are overreacting to his ghost costume. Nobody's buying it, with one call member responding, You keep saying that you were a ghost, but we're not dumb, dude. We weren't born yesterday. We can put all these things together. 
With congressional attention on them, Guild members reportedly now fear doxing, having their personal details leaked online. Enclave's site reads that the Guild will be out of action until a later date. But it's still just one Guild in a community of millions. I've been around the block countless times with World of Warcraft, and I've met some brilliant mates in the Plains of Azeroth. Equally, though, I've hopped into guilds only to find their group chats swimming in piss, community sites flooded with swastikas and far-right memes. World of Warcraft. <laughs> Yay. That, that's how, that's a thing. They're getting well, a lot of congressional, congressional, att- they're getting more congressional attention than Star Wars Battlefront 2. Well, how many subscribers does World of Warcraft have? Oh, God. Um, it might actually be in a later post. Uh, in, a, in a later news story. Let me just see if it's in there. In, in 2015, uh, Activision Blizzard last reported 5.5 global subscribers. It is projected the number of subscribers decreased to reach 4.46 million. So, so between 4 and 5 million. Yeah, let's go with that. That seems reasonable. And there's actor subscribers 3.2 million. We're talking millions of people. M- millions of people play World of Warcraft. Without Some of doubt. them are going to be racist. <laughs> Ban them. Like, it's not you know, difficult. Yeah. Again, it's it's tempting to put Blizzard over the coals for this, but they're not exactly unique. I mean, and... 100% <laughs> agree with that, except I would normally not wreck Blizzard over the coals for for this too much. I would a little bit because hi, racist people are shitheads. E- except except politics and stuff. We can't have that. Ban them. <laughs> like if yeah, you're but temporarily... they're not going on Twitch streams and saying what they're saying. Uh, so that's okay. So yeah, that's fine then if it's just happening in the game. It's just like sort of the low the low level background racism that we just are sort of expected to live with. Yeah, it's Life. it's it's it's, fun. it's a part of a bigger problem, which is how do the video game industry and again society deal with toxicity online? Yeah, this and is true. I mean, that's going to deal with it. And in, in fairness to Blizzard, they're probably not far from the worst on this. I mean, you can name just about any game that happens to be set in the Middle Ages. And it will it for some reason racists really love you know, a game set in the Middle Ages. It's because black people weren't invented until it's because there were no black people in in medieval Europe. Obviously, oh, that's it's, it's oh. well known. Oh, it's a um, well known fact from all the people who were there, like who saw the uh, Middle Ages. Yeah, you know, but the thing is that these come from like niche developers in the middle of and don't have five million concurrent or. On, on, uh, they don't have yay many active subscribers the way Blizzard does. So I think there's a, a certain amount of, you know, the reason why Harry Potter and Pokemon get called out churches as satanic and, you know, Shimigami Tensei gets away with it is because people have heard. You know, yeah. Blizzard get, gets this in the neck because they are the biggest. They're the MMO, biggest game whereas, in town. Whereas they're probably not the worst in terms probably of not. how many races they've got lurking around in that there are. Some games it seems to frankly be actively encouraging it. That's seen as we've, the demographic. Yeah, we've we've yeah. we've been down that road uh, on this podcast a few times. We've we've talked. I don't about want to name games. names. But Feel free. I probably already did on this mostly podcast. Cause, mostly because I can't remember them. But yeah, I've immediately forgot about those games because fuck those guys. Um, the only part I take issue with is is the is the part uh, part of the story. Where it's like, oh, they ban them for a few days, and then they come back, and then they do their racist shit, and then they get banned for a few days, and then they come back, and then just ban them. Yeah. Yes, they'll probably find a way around it and like get a new account and resubscribe and start doing their racist shit on a completely different profile, but at least you ban them in the first instance. Like, it, sometimes it's just not rocket science. Like, for well, for, it kind of needs, if nothing else, needs to be a zero tolerance. <laughs> You yeah, know, you don't say, "Oh well, you used the N word and dressed up like a Ku Klux Klan, so you're banned for six days or whatever." Yeah, how dare you? You will see uh, you next so... week. We're okay. Like, just, just ban them. Like, as much as yeah. we talked ourselves in circles in the first part, where it's like, "Well, what can Blizzard do about this Hong Kong thing?" It's like, yes, it is a very complicated, complex situation. With this, it's like just ban Hammer. Like. I mean, I know I don't have 5 million subscribers, but it's what I do on Twitch. <laughs> you're racist, you're banned. 
your sex has to be banned, all those other things, you're banned. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of companies are afraid to do that because frightened that a significant proportion of their fan base is going to turn on them and then that becomes a controversy. I don't think Blizzard needs to worry about a portion of its fan base turning on it right now. Yeah. I think they are that already happened. But the yeah, I mean, yeah, depressingly I get what you mean, where it's like, oh, but we can't ban the racists. A lot of our customers might be racist. Yeah. Oh god. This is why I like this is why I like indie games. <laughs> Video games really suck these days. It's not just Blizzard and it's not just video games. I know, but still. Yeah. It gets really annoyed that, I don't know, you know, certain bands don't yeah, want yeah. to criticize their fans because they're worried because they're worried that they're, you know, that they're, well, they're worried that their fans are racist and they're going to react against them because a lot of the musical acts I've seen that have come out and said, yeah, fuck Trump, have spent the last three years just dealing with And that's become a full-time job and they just don't want it. And I, I, I sympathize. I don't know how to solve it. No, it's a problem bigger you know, than, than, than guess, us. You know, as soon as you, I think it's just they don't want to pick a fight. I'll pick a fight. I'll pick a fight with anyone. So bring it on. Yeah. Grr. 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 Let's move on, because yeah. I feel like I'm just going to... At any second now, I'm just going to bust out the scotch and the cigar and just really go to town on this depression. Um, Sorry. Number two. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Uh, happy thoughts. There was a PlayStation shake-up this week. Um, I got two news stories. I'm going to read them back to back because they're not particularly long and then we can discuss PlayStation things. Uh, Guerrilla Games, Herman Holst is now PlayStation's new head of Worldwide Studios. Uh, this is from Christopher Dring over at GamesIndustry.biz who writes, PlayStation has named Guerrilla Games Managing Director and Co-Founder Herman Holst as its new head of Worldwide Studios. He starts the role immediately and will manage all of Sony's game development across its 14 internal studios. Meanwhile, Worldwide Studios President Shuhei Yoshida will leave his current role to lead a new initiative that will look after and nurture external, smaller, independent studios. The changes are part of Sony Interactive Entertainment's restructuring ahead of the launch of PS5. It also comes a month after the departure of Worldwide Studios Chairman Sean Layden. Uh, speaking to GamesIndustry.biz, PlayStation CEO and President Jim Ryan said that Hulse's appointment will prove Sony is very much thinking globally as it moves into the next generation. Part 2, PlayStation's head of global second party games, Geo Corsi, leaves Sony. Now this is from Vicky Blake over at MCV who writes, Geo Corsi, PlayStation's head of global second party games, has announced he's left the company. In a tweet on his personal Twitter account, Corsi, who joined the company as a senior director just ahead of the launch of the PlayStation 4 in 2013, said it had been a hell of a ride and was extremely proud of all the things PlayStation accomplished. Uh, yep, that's a repeat of exactly what he just said. He tweeted a bunch of stuff uh, and at the end said, Finally, a hearty thank you to all the great devs, pubs, Great devs, pubs, partners, friends, and fans who made my time at PlayStation so memorable. So many cool moments from all the titles to all the shows. As I said, it was a hell of a ride. Thanks for all, and long live the Vita. Fuck yeah, long live the <laughs> Fuck Vita. Fuck yeah, Geo, Geo. <laughs> As yet, Corsi has not detailed what's next, but says he'll be back in games soon enough. I'm sad that you Gio's just put the story up because he praised the Vita. So, do you know Geo? Do you know Geo Corsi much? No. Because his role at PlayStation, as far as I can tell, now I know obviously it was bigger than this, he he was the guy that would come out of PSX about halfway through the show and announce a bunch of games, and he'd be like, hey, uh, Thomas was alone, it's coming to PS4, and Vita, and then everybody would cheer because it was a PlayStation fan convention, and then he'd be like, and this game is coming to PS4, and Vita, and then everyone would cheer, yeah. that was his role. <laughs> He was a bit of a cult hero <laughs> at PlayStation, um, so right. that's why I put it in. I really like, I really liked you. He always came out in like a sports top of some kind, and he always had a Vita in his hand. And yes, that is what, more or less why I put it in there. <laughs> I had a mini heart attack when I was reading the headlines for the first one, though, because the one, the story that I picked to use, the headline was quite neutral. It was just like, oh, there's a bunch of changes at PlayStation. Some news sites, and I'm not going to name names, 
some news sites led with the headline name, that name, sh- name, name, name. <laughs> led, led with the headline along the lines of Shuhei Yoshida isn't the president of Worldwide Studios anymore and I had a heart attack because I was like has Shu left PlayStation? <laughs> I was like no not Shu because everybody's leaving PlayStation at the minute well yeah it's like this happens every five years every time there's a new generation it's not really yeah the next generation is coming the, yeah they just shuffle the executives yeah. Herman Holst is a cool guy. Probably healthy, I would actually, I would think. Well, I mean, it's a new console, right? You want a new you want a new vision for your new console, I guess. Like, you've got Herman Holst, the guy who was the lead project guy, directed, dude, of Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. Um, yeah. And a really cool I'll guy. admit I had to go Google Guerrilla Games, remember Oh right, yeah, it is Horizon. Too, Horizon, right? getting a bunch of kills on games, but Horizon. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the Horizon's like. Yeah. Horizon's good. I like Horizon. Horizon is good. You should probably finish it. You should. I mean, this is one thing I've always said PlayStation has as an advantage over Xbox, is that apart from Phil, like PlayStation has a lot of recognizable like names and faces. Like, as somebody who casually sort of follows their YouTube channel. Like, I watched a two-hour documentary about how they made a God of War. And at the end of it, I just wanted to give Kari Barlog a big hug. But it's like, Herman Holst turns up a lot in, like, in these weird videos. Like, they were talk- there was a there was one video where they had a conversation between Herman Holst and Hideo Kojima. And, like, there was all these different types of cool videos. So I was like, oh, Herman Holst, I know that guy. He's cool. We'll never see him on stage because PlayStation don't do that anymore. <laughs> have- Again, that's probably a good thing, too. <laughs> I, I miss the personalities though. I miss it when like, like and back, this was I'm, way back in the day when like Adam Boys yeah, and then I'm Shoe. Sure Sony doesn't. I miss it too though. I miss I miss seeing yeah. Shoe here on on stage. I miss Shoe. Come back to me, Shoe. I, I, I think that's the thing they did the first time they they did had a big shuffle around of everyone before the PlayStation Four came out, and I think that the PlayStation brand out of the death grip of Sony's Japan offices was probably a good thing this is true i mean this comes off of the back i mean for one thing herman holst is european right like mm-hmm. i mean that probably He's says Dutch. something yeah like that probably I, says I assume something. he is because yeah like he does sound like he should be fighting dracula though i mean maybe he does he's a pretty cool dude maybe he is fighting dracula Maybe that's uh, why Horizon and... Zero Dawn 2 hasn't been announced yet. <laughs> and to be honest, I don't know about you, but I just feel like, like the guys at Sony have been feeling a bit... like the, uh, Sony's attitude has kind of been a bit shitty. Like, Agree. It's been kind of complacent, and I think changing around the executives is probably a good thing for that alone. Like, I think they probably need other people in charge and fresh ideas. Because I think the success has gone to their head. And I am so happy you're here right now. I have said that, right, in really in response to various news stories about PlayStation for the past like year or so. I have said that to not one, not two, but three different people on this podcast. Exactly what you were just saying. Oh, they're getting a bit arrogant. Oh, they're getting a bit complacent. Oh, their attitude's a bit shitty. And each and every person has been like, "No, you're reading too much into it." Well, it's kind of the attitude that led to the PlayStation Three coming out <laughs> announcing the PlayStation Three and. Watch his face coming out and announcing the Xbox One would be always online. <laughs> Don know, I don't Matrick. think it's necessarily always healthy to be the most ex- to be in them. It seems no, to go not. to people's heads. But um, except Nintendo's obviously because they're because the because they're the best. <laughs> obviously, because Nintendo has never turned anything wrong. Ever. Nintendo has never I'm had joking. a bad console launch. Ever? No, ever. <laughs> ever. It's never had a bad. It's never had a bad console. All its consoles are like fight me. The best consoles of their respective generations. Yes. Clearly. Oh, you're joking, right? No, no. It's 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 provable fact because even if you're like you're gonna throw this back, you like anyone out there might throw it back at me. Oh, but the Wii U, but 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 but, but the Switch came out in the same generation. So suck it. <laughs> It it's a it it tracks trust me but <laughs> Wii U is oh, good man. I'm gonna get the Wii U was good the the controller was terrible 
but the game is really good. The controller was terrible. The marketing campaign was terrible. It had a stupid name. <laughs> but apart but from all the, of that... It had the best virtual console. It had all the good games, though. I mean... Yeah, they're all, they're all coming to Switch now. There's a reason they're all coming out on Switch. The... <laughs> it's like Fatal Frame is the last one to be announced. Well, then. 3D world, I suppose. Yeah. I'd rather they just made a new Fatal Frame. I don't need to relive Fatal Frame 5. Oh. Um... Uh, yeah, like, this is what I've been saying for a year. It's like, PlayStation have been getting arrogant, and they've been reminding me of the PlayStation that led into PlayStation 3. I'm so happy well, you're here to uh, agree with me. Yeah, just, just to sort of, rather than talking the abstract, things like, you know, cross-play, um, not want to let people play Fortnite with all the other platforms, things like that. Yeah. 100%. Like that was the main one that I t so that was the one where I think I started and I was like this this feels wrong somehow like the statement they made a couple of months ago a few months ago might have been just around about E three time about like PlayStation five is for the hardcore gamer and like to me that just read and I just fucking rolled my eyes so far back I was well, legally blind for six minutes. In this, that's a lesson that again in <laughs> Sony. My much much like you know the people who fought in world war ii are always are always fighting that their attitude of you know this is this is for the players that was their tagline and their mission same for the playstation 4 and it was deliberately contrasted with the xboxes you know this is your media box which is going to play fucking sky and whatever what and it's you know going to be a video game console second and yeah. that was a sort of deliberate reaction to it and it plays really well with that hardcore audience who guess what they're the ones who buy the console on day one and they're the ones who sort of provide the engine that gets you to 10 million first yeah 100 yeah. percent. i mean we obviously saw that because with the playstation and the xbox and yeah how one has re like rocketed through the stratosphere past 100 million units sold and one really didn't but yeah, it was statements like that that made me a bit yeah. iffy. But on, uh, on the other, yeah, on the other side of the coin, Microsoft sort of learning their lesson. They, you know, they're with a better hardware revision in the Xbox One X and just great value propositions like Game Pass. Like Game, Game Pass, Pass reminds me a lot of how PlayStation Plus used to be when you got <laughs> six games a month. Oh yeah, on multiple consoles. You know? with and there were games you wanted, and not you know fucking cooking games and stuff that's already been on sale for like three years i think neo just got put in there hey. it's like yeah oh i just got my new playstation 4 for christmas what's what's gonna be the new playstation plus game oh it's neo. right neo's a great game but is it a playstation plus game <laughs> I mean, everybody yeah. was. Scr I remember everybody shouting for like two years for Knack to be a PlayStation Plus game. So maybe we shouldn't trust the masses on this one. No. Um, Look, I'm not suggesting that they put fucking control on it or something. That would be awesome. They might do that. I'd I, I'm, I'm be surprised if it goes any Game Pass. Since it never well, appeared on the NBD. Want, I suppose what they want is they want people to get PlayStation now because they've cut the price and apparently. Nobody knows that you can actually um, download stuff from PlayStation. Like you can download games to your hard drive and play them Well, that's that because way, so the, the way they've been back. talking, the messaging on, around PlayStation now has been a bit... Well, it's all been about the streaming. Yeah. Which like, I just sort of thing. Looking, like, I didn't know that... You, I, I haven't tried it. I didn't know you can actually download stuff. Like, that makes it more like Game, you know, um, game Pass. Game Pass. Which the messaging with Game Pass is, here's a bunch of free shit every... Hooray. <laughs> Here's free games. Have fun. Some of these games will be launching directly into Game Pass, like The Outer Worlds and After Party. Yeah, here's Gears of War. Here's Gears 5. You don't want to spend $60 on it? $9.99 a month, motherfuckers. I mean, yeah, you don't own it and you can't lend it and yada 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 and that's the conversation, but it's a hell of a value prospect. Yeah, like... Especially, you know, when you're going to the next generation with something like that. Yeah. And you've got, like, all the different games that are already available on it. Like, you're going to buy an Xbox 4, and you're going to be like, here's a, just, all right, I don't have many launch games, let's say. I've got Halo Infinite, and that's cool. But, like, if you just spend an extra £7.99 for one month, and here's 100 games. Down yeah. whichever ones you want. <laughs> 
I nobody is gonna get a hundred games with their launch console. <laughs> I got one. I got one with my Xbox One. It was Dead Rising 3. I hated myself so much playing that yeah, game. No, you don't like Dead Rising 3? I've never played Dead I, Rising I didn't like game. Dead Rising 3. But it was either that or Rise Son of Rom. And... I tried... Oh, God. I tried watching the Dead Rising movie one. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move Let's on. Let's move on. PlayStation, like, I'm a bit... A little bit more comfortable like, with the direction that they're going in now. I, I think it is. This is a good thing to sort of yeah. switch up the executive. And I guess also what? Like... all the people are good. All the people are going to move on to six figure salaries at the bare minimum. Yeah. They're going to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean everybody's going to be fine. Like Gio's getting a job somewhere. It's clear that he has. He just can't talk about it right now. Shu Hair being in charge of indies, like indie partners at PlayStation, is a bit. Especially after their whole oh, the next ones for the hardcore gamers is a it puts me at ease a bit more. Like again, as someone who mm-hmm. literally twenty minutes ago on this podcast just went, well, "This is why I'd I play indie games." I'd imagine that they're probably seeing the Switch steal a lot of their their money because the Vita was a great indie machine, and I think the what? Switch has sort of become the natural successor. I'd imagine someone at Sony is absolutely fucking furious, like thinking, "Why the hell did we not get that fucking?" Go- yeah, why the hell did we kill the Vita? And that's a good fucking question, PlayStation. Why the hell did you kill the Vita? Bastards. Number three. <laughs> EA FIFA staff personal Twitter accounts hacked as harassment gets even uglier. This is from Wesley and Pool over at Eurogamer. And I had no idea this was going on until this morning. Several no, I only f- saw about it yesterday. Yeah. Several FIFA team members saw their personal Twitter accounts hacked this week as part of targeted attacks, EA has said. On Monday, FIFA community staff tweeted messages in support of a high-profile and outspoken critic of EA Sports who was recently permanently banned from official tournaments for toxic behaviour. The Twitter accounts of those EA staff members affected have now been deleted, EA told Eurogamer. In a statement issued to Eurogamer, EA said, quote, On Monday, several EA Sports FIFA team members were made aware that their personal social media channels were compromised following targeted attacks on their accounts. Employee safety is our first priority, so several staff have suspended or deactivated their channels. End quote. EA's FIFA community managers have, for some time now, suffered harassment, verbal abuse, and even death threats on social media as the game's toxic community has grown increasingly exacerbated about the state of the game. With the release of FIFA 20, this toxicity was fueled by issues with career mode, but it's subsequently come to encompass other aspects of the game. In October, one of the FIFA community managers affected issued a personal statement on Twitter outlining the, outlining the messages he and his colleagues had received. The messages make for uncomfortable reading, and that's a, a warning that I'm about to read a bunch of stuff that's not going to sound great. In the space of just a couple of days, one FIFA community manager was called a useless cunt, a stroking nonce, a bumbling fucktard, a silly cunt, a piece of shit, a useless prick, and a fucking asshole. On Twitter, one Twitter user messaged a group of community managers to say, I hope you all kill yourself. Verbal attacks and toxicity hurts us all, the community manager said. The attack on the personal social media accounts of EA staff follows the ban of Kurt Fenich, better known as Kurt0411, an outspoken FIFA content creator and former pro player. EA has permanently banned Fenich from all future official FIFA events for repeated code of conduct violations, which followed a final warning and suspension during the FIFA 19 tournament series. As EA put it, Fenich was found to be posting or uploading materials that we have determined are abusive, harassing, and vulgar. Fenech's videos, while popular among many in the FIFA community, have included attacks on FIFA opponents and EA Sports staff, the latter of which he called cowards. In one video, he spat on an official EA FIFA 19 scar. Oh, Before the FIFA community manager's Twitter accounts were suspended, they were used to issue messages in support of Fenech. One appeared to revoke his ban. Responding to the ban in a new video, an unapologetic Fenech said, I don't give a shit, that's that there's a camera in front of me. Why do I have to change what I say because there's a camera in front of me? This world at the moment, you can't say what you think. I don't care. Oh, on the scarf spitting issue, he said, I don't give a shit if it's got an EA logo on it. I don't care because they've been spitting on us for the last few years. On calling EA staff out, quote, This is the main reason I got banned. These guys, they live in this delusional world where they think they're doing a good job. They think everything's fine when in reality it's not. 
In reality, every single one of these employees who has worked on the last couple of games should be unemployed right now. That's what should happen to them. In a subsequent video on the hacked Twitter accounts, Finette said, One thing's for sure, there's a revolution on the way. You have to pick a side, and choose a side wisely. You can't come after me and do nothing about your game. Enough is enough. Karma. It's about damn time you start caring about us. We deserve justice. We deserve a damn football game. <laughs> he sounds like a prince. He's he sounds like he's going to really fun of parties. If I have to pick a side, I pick the side that he's not on. <laughs> like, whoa. I went, like, I wasn't going to put any of the finesse stuff in, but then I read it and I was like, Jesus, I need to put some of this in the podcast. Like, this is next level. What the it's like fuck? Peak, peak entitled Bell End, really, isn't it? I mean, it's just. <sighs> So, yeah, you got banned for toxic behavior, and now you're like, oh, no, it's because you should not be unemployed. Oh, don't harass developers. Be- like, you know, if e- EA suck. We all know this. But, you know, don't go out and harass individuals. It's it's like unbearably shitty. Just for people trying to do it. Yeah, it's like EA sucks. This is 100% accurate. Do you, you know, know who doesn't you- suck? <laughs> the people who work at EA. <laughs> it's like... It's a sen- the sense of fucking entitlement. It's like if you f- if you have a problem with the way EA is handling the FIFA series, don't buy it. You're not owed a football game every year. And guess what? We all kind of know that the FIFA series is just like a rehash of last of last year's edition. It's like no fucking shit. What are you expecting? Yeah, like I know, I know people I'm expecting. Who... I know I'm expecting you know rational thought from racist twats, but. You know. This is true. Well, um, not, nec- not necessarily racist. Just twice. Well, I mean... I mean, I'm willing to, I will to bet cash money that, you know, <laughs> this guy, you know, voted leave once people kicked out of the country, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm willing to bet if I go to... I'm putting to, together a picture, you know. <laughs> if I'm willing to bet, based on the, the quotes that are in the Eurogamer article that we've just wrote, that if I go on his YouTube channel, I'll probably find some videos with some very familiar titles in them. Yeah, um, like this. This is a guy who uses the word "cuck" on a daily basis. Exactly. Like, what? Like, just. I mean, dude. He's. He's. You know, it's like he's. He's probably bought Jordan Peterson's. Oh yeah, he probably loves Jordan Peterson's book. He's, he's probably been invited onto a podcast. He's probably unironically tweeted, "Subscribe to PewDiePie." Yeah. I didn't know how long we were keeping that train going there. <laughs> I, I don't know. No, that's, that's I don't. I, just yeah. the whole situation is just absolutely ludicrous yeah. to me. It's like I don't understand. <clears throat> like I don't understand these people. Obviously, like the, and that seems to be the foundation of this podcast I, for the last six years. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't understand why people are. Well, I do understand why people are upset that FIFA sucked. But I don't understand people going on thinking, well, we're owed to do games. Like, again, capitalism. EA has the FIFA license. They can do what they want with it, and you keep buying their game. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's like yeah. Fallout, right? Like, Fallout 76. You know, that doesn't mean that you are owed a decent FIFA game. It certainly doesn't give you the right to go shout and swear at people. I mean, and spit on their merchandise s- and put it on video. You know what? As someone who has, has played it up on camera, spitting on a scarf, I can understand the theatrics of it. It's the message that goes around it. Like, it's the yeah. rest of it. It's the whole, like, oh, you're cowards. Oh, I don't give a shit if you sp- if it's got an EA logo on it because they've been spitting on us for the last few years. If that they was haven't. It, they I'm... haven't. They've been trying, I'm sure, their best to make <laughs> a decent football game. They- not succeeded, but I think that's more a faulty business model than any kind of nest. Yeah, you know, they're like... not out to they're not out to get you. Well, I might have apparently they are. There's a revolution thought... on the way, Pat Rick. Oh um, Jesus Christ, I know. It's a football game. Like this is the part though where it's like I don't understand like people in general. I mean like I would this. say go and support another football game, but again that's part of the problem there isn't fucking one. army. But it's just like enjoy things. Like, do you know what I do if I if I get a game and I don't enjoy it, right? I mean, there is an extra stage for me as someone who does YouTube videos. I make a video about it, but 
I play the game and I'm like, oh, like even if it's a game I'm really excited about, I might be a bit upset. Like, oh, this this sucks. That 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 sucks. And then I just I take the thing out of, or I just and I just put another game on. <laughs> yeah, you don't suggest the develop the people who made it go and kill themselves. No, I might go on YouTube and make a video and be like, this game's not very good. Here's, no, like, here's a bunch of reasons or even, why. Or even more, I, you know, I don't like this game. I did not enjoy this game. This is not the game for me. I have some theories as to why. I'm going to yeah. try to sort of explain it and be constructive and not be negative about the people who made it. Hundred percent. I would never like. I would never call a developer lazy, for example. Like, that is a fucking trigger for me. Where it's like, if someone calls a developer lazy, I generally well, unsubscribe. <laughs> like, yeah. Again. It's it's part of a bigger picture. It's like this is kind of I don't want to go necessarily go into this now, but it's kind of why I dislike Jim Sterling an awful lot because I think he's sort of like ground zero for a lot of this. Like I the reason why you know people say, Oh well, he's just a character and he's you know, he's anti cap you know, he's critical of capitalism and yada yada yada. It's like, well, the character he creates is sort of like deliberately negative and really kind of mean spirited you know, kind of ad hominem and sort of creates this sort of dialogue about you know laziness and you know we are owed something we are we you know we spend money on something therefore we a certain kind of product and you see it sort of reverberate outwards into the people who use you know to you know sjw and x and y and lazy developers and pandering to whatever and you know you know it, it's going back to the conversation we were joking about it but with the point is that we can sort of like fill in this guy's profile because this is part of a pattern in how yeah. in sort of how the conversation is and how certain parts of the gaming audience talk about develop developers you know? yeah and developers like if you want to criticize ea there's a whole bunch of Go stuff you can it. criticize ea about but you know the guy who just goes there and works on the lighting engine does not deserve to or it's even, i mean it's even worse it's like it's the guys who are who are the community managers they just go on on social media and and, and manage the community of, of yeah. fifa in this regard it's like they've they, they've got very little to do with why fifa sucks <laughs> like if it indeed sucks yeah. i don't know i'm it like for a long time like fifa 20 don't know don't, well don't i have know. no no interest in playing whatsoever but i'm yeah. not surprised if it's not very good it's yeah but i also don't think oh well oh no it's I'm not owed you know a decent no and the same thing is kind of going on going on the conversation about Pokemon at the minute because you know there's some, oh. because the Pokemon the, the the roster for Sword and Shield leaked and there's 400 Pokemon out of God knows how many yeah. and you know you're not oh Gengar yeah. and Blastoise. This I'm trying to avoid the Pokemon you know the Pokemon noise because this is my first Pokemon game. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's like it's like you spend you spend fifty pounds on the game. Well, well, no, you're not owed it. The developers made a choice. You can disagree with that choice. They might not even have made it for the right reasons, but you're owed something yeah. better. If you don't like it, don't pay for it. Yeah, <laughs> that's how it works. You know? That's how it works. You know, it's you know, it's sort of boiling everything down to something's you know ma material and financial value, and maybe that's dubious but you know we live in a capitalist society if you don't like oh, something man. you don't go for it this is it's kind end. of why i get it's kind of why i don't understand when people complain about dlc it's like, well, if you don't like it you don't have to you're not owed something this is true like i'll rage the high heavens about loot boxes um, and predatory microtransactions but i have yeah i've never really said anything much about dlc like, like i laugh about horse armor and like <laughs> You know, Again, things like horse armor. Don't buy, don't I did buy, buy it. I didn't buy it. I just laugh about it. Like, if you bought it, you bought it. Like, whatever. That's a long text message. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I get your point. It's just like DLC is, is yeah, whatever. There's a whole massive conversation There's, to have. And I'm loving yeah. the fact that this is the anti capitalism podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Again, I'm trying to phrase it in a way it doesn't just sound like I'm just angry about the way the world is. Although, in fairness, I am. Yeah, and I'm yeah, trying yeah. to be. I'm trying to be positive and not sound like the guy who's defending EA because it's difficult. Because it's just you know, there's always some fucker out there who wants to nail oh. you as a hypocrite. 
Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Oh, hundred percent. Like it's like the last podcast you were on where we were talking about Blizzard and you pointed out that the fact that I still had the hoodie on in the mm-hmm. back of the chair and it was like, oh shit, I should really get rid of that. Which I don't have a problem with you for that. You not, know, not I mean, get I, rid of. Listen, I watched the Diablo Four trailer and I thought it was cool as fuck. Not, not get rid I, of the hoodie. I've still yeah. got the hoodie. <laughs> It's just not on the back of my chair anymore. But some, but someone's going to come out of the well and say, and yet you live in a society. And yet you live in a society. Guess what? A bunch of people made a game that's really enjoyable. It has nothing to do with Blizzard's stance on Hong Kong. <laughs> Incredibly it's, enough. The community yeah. managers of FIFA have nothing to do with whatever fucking bullshit you're moaning about yeah. about FIFA. Like, just get a grip on reality. It's, this, is, you know, this is a podcast where we're talking video games we're not here to fix society yeah but on the other hand it's not like we can't call out toxic behavior like we like sort this, of thing yeah. it's like I, i'll very rarely defend ea as a company but i will always defend the community managers who work at ea unless they say something that's got- toxic like well, racist, sexist, or whatever. Then I probably won't. But you, you know what? I, you I'm, get what I mean. I'm, tr- well, I'm trying to think. That ca- was it. What they called the duty guys? I think they snapped and sort of said this community was toxic, and that just. Oh, that was the worse. Apex Legends guys. But yeah, uh, yeah, was, was Apex Legends. And I just thought, well, they're not saying anything that's not true. <laughs> Me and, me and Keith did a podcast about it, and I was literally... Keith was doing the whole thing of, like, you can't really say that, and I was just doing the whole, yeah, but it's true, though. Well, you, you, you tr- I mean, it's, yeah, it's... Their job is pretty much not to say that, in fairness. Yeah. But again, when people go in the house and say, oh, how dare these people say this about the community? And then you're... You're literally proving his point right now. Yeah, you're not owed... <laughs> when you act like, like a cunt, you're not owed civility. <laughs> Someone's going to snap eventually. Yeah, let's move on. We've got two more things. Okay, and it's it's well. It, it, I think the thing is that is it's debating in bad faith. It's like you you know you you call someone names all day and tell them to kill themselves and then bombard them and then you know when they snap say well how dare you that's very uns. I mean, how many times have we seen it repeated like over and over again? I mean, it, it, you could go back. I mean, you can go back further than this, but I'm just remembering that whole thing with Riot Games a while ago. Yeah. Not Riot Games, it's... it was Guild Wars people. Yeah, it, it's become ritualized at this point. It has. You know, again, this this guy just reads like a form letter for Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Let's move on. Number four. <laughs> Brendan Green. I only Happy have... Thoughts. Brendan Green says, I only have one woman on my team, and I hate that. Happy thoughts. This is from Matthew Handaran over at GamesIndustry.biz, who writes, PUBG Corporation's Brendan Green has urged the game companies to target education in their push towards bringing more women into the industry. Speaking at the VIEW conference recently, the creator of PUBG said that recruitment guidelines where he is based in Amsterdam have made it very difficult to improve the diversity diversity of his team, a 25-person unit which he leads as director of special projects. Quote, it's really hard, he told the crowd at View last month. We cannot tell a recruiter that we want a particular type of person. We will give them a job description and we will tell them this is the kind of team we're building, but we can't tell them we want a diverse selection of people. They will just give us stuff. And as a result, I have one woman on my team and I hate that. My team has people from all over the world, from Ukraine, Russia, America, Canada. It's an international crew, but all male. Egg quote. Green has worked with PUBG Corp's human resources team to make progress within the restrictions on what a job advert can explicitly say, focusing on the presence of gendered language or anything that might alienate female applicants. Quote, I've looked at my job descriptions, trying to figure out if we have a male-oriented job description, but no, they had heavily feminized wording, right? You try and try, but I'm reliant on the CVs that I get through the door, and the quality of the candidates we get is not at the stage we want. It sucks, but we are trying, end quote. Green was being interviewed by Jan Bart van Beek, animation director at Guerrilla Games, which is also based in Amsterdam. He echoed the same concerns and described the push for gender balance as an interesting challenge for the games industry. Do you have any thoughts on this? It popped up in my inbox and I was like, I should put this in the podcast. Um, I don't really have a lot of sympathy for him because, you know, he's, he's running the company, right? Yeah, well, he's running the... Like, yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. It's Brendan like Green. Like, it's his... It, it's his company. This this is... Forgive me, I don't know that much about PUBG. This but is the guy who made... It's PUBG. Play, Brendan Green is literally player unknown. Like, he's player unknown. Yeah. You know, so he's the guy who created a game, you know, 
that squillions of people playing his money and he his hands are tied when it comes to who he hires i don't know if it's who he hires um, i think he's got an interesting like <clears throat> i think he's got an interesting point about the where is it um we, the 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 sort of weird restrictions in in Amsterdam or Holland, I guess Netherlands. We cannot tell a recruiter we want a particular type of person. We will give them a job description and we will tell them this is the kind of team we're building. But we can't tell them we want a diverse selection of people. As, as someone who lives in the in the UK, I guess because it's like every. The, Everything Every job I've ever seen says, says we welcome know, we we val- we welcome diversity yada yada yada. Yeah. Like it, it makes it sound like he's getting a bunch of CVs from dude bros, and it's like you could go on LinkedIn and look for someone who has the experience. Yeah, and, a, like, and approach them. Like it's it's a, yeah, it's a weird thing to do these days, where the whole process of job applications is to get a thousand CVs and then you know get spiders to delete it to remove as many as possible but you don't have to do it that way like yeah. i imagine you could hire anyone you want and that someone will have the skill set you want who happens to be a woman you know Shocking. yeah i mean 100 <laughs> percent. like it sounds like you know you rec you recognize that you have a problem that's good you know you you recognize that you want to fix it. that's also good but you're not actually working to fix it you're just sort of blaming it on well this is just the way there is there are no win video games industry i mean there are but it's it's a bit chicken and egg it's like you yeah. know there are no, there are, there are no applicants you know because no women are applying because women don't apply to work in the video game industry mm. It's that last part of the equation where it's like that's a bit weird but maybe a lot of women don't want to work in Amsterdam city of art and culture maybe a lot maybe a lot of women don't want to work PUBG on PUBG or like whatever's next for Brendan Green like special project he's making of like yeah maybe that's it who knows but there are ways around it but I do think he brings up a, a point where it's like there is like an educational component to it which probably could be done better like and we're seeing that now like there's a lot of there's a lot of game days. I see them advertised on Twitter. PlayStation do do a lot of things where it's like getting young girls into video game development. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like we should be doing more of that. Like just to just to let them know that it's an option for them. Like he says some good things and he says some weird things as well. Well, I, yeah, it sounds like his heart is in the right place. Yeah, hundred percent. I would like to sit if I could sit him down. And have a, but it also sort of reeks of you know you know white privilege dude bro you know uh, tech, oh it's me tech dude manager oh it's so terrible women applying for this job well in, in fairness he's not even saying that you know he's saying you know the process of applying for jobs we you know is not producing enough female candidates and isn't that unfortunate again you're do- you're dodging responsibility there you could fix this if you wanted to work at it. If I could sit him down and have a beverage and ask him a single question, a single question based on this new story alone, it would be, what's heavily feminized wording in a job advert look like? I think I sort of know what he means in that he's trying... Language is gendered in a way that we often don't notice, often until it's pointed out to us, and I, I can't necessarily give the best examples because I, I i don't work in hr recruitment unsurprisingly um but think things like you know use your voice and power things like that you know like trying I'm, not yeah. trying not to present yourself as this hyper aggressive company that makes games about guns yeah okay you cool know? i might look into I, this because i genuinely look at that sentence and just go it's an interesting philosophical avenue and i think it's it's, it is creeping into recruitment lately like how you how companies present themselves like is this a fun company is it kind of formal and stuffy is it old-fashioned is it you know cutting edge is it diverse in terms of you know conservative white dudes yeah 
I, I, I just don't really know, necessarily have a grasp of the specifics or the nitty gritty of it. Yeah, you know, words like nitty gritty, which is a euphemism for female genitalia, like that's probably a word that you, a term you want to avoid. In... I never knew that, but it makes sense. <laughs> that's the thing I learned today. <laughs> Another word for a vagina. Because, you know, the English doesn't have... It. Well, actually, English doesn't have enough words because they're all euphemisms or overly clear. I was watching... Just to be a complete tangent before I move on to the final part of the portion, I was watching Community. It's your podcast. I was, I was watching Community yesterday and I, I watched the episode where... Um, I watched an episode where the English guy, uh, John Oliver, can't remember his character's name, was in it. And uh, he said... The, he was like... he was. Uh, oh, sit your fanny down on the couch because obviously, like you know, that's <laughs> a thing. and one of the characters goes, "Oh, that's a British word that for like that means vagina in in Britain." And John Oliver's character replies, "Every word means vagina in Britain." Yeah, <laughs> everything's a euphemism for. God, what's what's the joke? I can't remember what it was. It was Terry Pratchett or what? It's like you you use a sentence in an English language coming across. Yeah, you know, twelve Elizabethan synonym female genitalia. <laughs> Great. I'm I'm butchering that quote. I'm sorry. That's fine. You don't have it at hand. It's absolutely fine. Anyway, we're going to get through this last part really quickly because I ran out of news stories. Three big publishers published their quarterly earnings reports. We're going to talk briefly about them now. Number one, Activision Blizzard sees slumping sales and sliding engagement. This is from Brian and Sinclair over at GamesIndustry.biz, who writes, When Activision Blizzard reported shrinking sales, profit, and engagement numbers for its second fiscal quarter, the company said it had been investing in its key franchises, and those investments would begin to pay off in the second half of the year. The publisher announced its third quarter results last week, and it appears those payoffs have been postponed to the fourth quarter, at least. Good job, Brendan. Activision Blizzard net revenues were down 15%, $1.28 billion for the three months ended September 30th, while net bookings were down 27%, $1.21 billion. Part of that shortfall can be attributed to a tough comparison of the year-ago quarter back when Activision still counted Bungie's Destiny franchise among its offerings. And while Activision revenues were down sharply, off 47% year-over-year, it was not the only division of the company to see sales slide. Blizzard revenues were also down 38% year over year to $394 million, while King revenues were off down about 1% to $500 million. Jesus Christ, that's the company that makes Candy Crush Saga, isn't it? They make a is lot it? of money. Oh, right, yes, it is. Well, yeah. yeah, when's the last time anyone talked about Candy Crush? Yeah, that's just a thing, but it still makes half a billion dollars. <laughs> well, yeah, a it, makes more, it makes more than <laughs> Blizzard. Yeah, it makes more than Blizzard. <laughs> The publisher's engagement metrics were also down across the board. Overall, monthly active users for Activision Blizzard were down 8% year over year to 316 million. Jeez. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Activision accounted for the steepest drop, losing 22% of its audience to finish the quarter with 36 million MAUs. I know what that stands for. Monthly active users. All right. Blizzard's monthly active users were down 11% to 33 million. While King's monthly active users declined 6% to 247 million. If there was a silver lining, it was that the company still turned profit (laughs) with earnings per share of 26 cents down 24%. Yeah, whatever. This has nothing. PSA alert. This has nothing to do with Blitzchung or Hong Kong no, or anything else. Instead, all the people boycotting Blizzard, this would be a drop in the ocean. Like this, It probably doesn't account to amount to 0.1% of Blizzard's revenue. No, also, no, I mean, just mean that this was the literally the wrong this, quarter. Yeah, it's also before. <laughs> this like, all this ended before Blitzchung and, and yeah. Hong Kong was a thing. Like, I feel like I've seen a couple of, of snap hot takes which were like, oh, we've made a difference. And it's like, whoa, whoa, no, no, you I mean, haven't. No, yeah. Ha- I mean, you might have done, but this isn't this isn't anything to do with that. Whoa. Well, let's be honest, they, they haven't made a difference. I mean, let's be realistic. Like, 316 million monthly. Those are the monthly active users. So those are the users that are actually using... Call yeah. of Duty, Starcraft, it's not Overwatch. Just people, it's not just people with a Blizzard account. Yeah, like it's not just me who hasn't played a Blizzard game in yeah. months. Like, 
I don't count in this. That's not. I mean, you and I have both had the same reaction when I've read it out loud, like 360 yeah, million so people. Well, like, you think what? about the numbers of it. Think about it. That, that. And, and that's and that's in decline as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm not super. Sp- when was the last WoW expansion? If that's what I was about to say. It's like this is just normal. Right for a company that like Call of Duty, fair enough, that comes out every yeah, single year, right? Nice. The last expansion was last year. Well, they just announced one, so that's probably going to help. Shh. Battle for Azeroth was August twenty eighteen. Battle for Azeroth, because they uh, sorry Azeroth, not Azeroth. Azeroth, that's a completely Azeroth. different Azeroth. battle. Azeroth. You're not going to win that one. Um, sorry, like this is just a normal thing for a company that doesn't release, like, new games, like, apart from Call of Duty, doesn't release, yeah. like, new games like, what every does, year. That's what I was going to say. What does what does Activision have these days except Call of, Call Duty, of Duty, which has been in decline year after year for the past decade? They made Tony Hawk's Pro Skate 5 not that long ago. Who you remember that? Um, this is just a normal thing for, like, companies that have long tail games like overwatch starcraft to yeah. heroes of the storm it's like month the, all of the monthly active user base will go down and then shadowlands yeah. will come out and uh, the hearthstone expansion and overwatch 2 and then we'll go up and but then even then down. that's not that's nothing compared to 247 million people playing candy or whatever yeah king like that's probably where the loss is more than anything is king king I mean, a percentage of 6% down, but it was 247 million. That's a lot of millions of people. Well, actually, no, it's 360 million stuff for Activision Blizzard themselves. Yeah, yeah it's Call of Duty, WoW, Overwatch. Call of Duty, WoW, Overwatch, Starcraft. They've lost, and they've lost Destiny. Uh, yeah, the, Destiny is not a thing anymore, which is why they're down. Like, it's as simple as that. Like, yeah. they're, they're down because they can't count Destiny amongst the... Like, they're going to be down probably every quarter until their next financial year. Yeah, because of destiny. Yeah, again, this is a conversation I was having someone over Blizz. This is is how it works. Like every other BlizzCon is good, and then on the on the down years, it's just there's not you know you, you, can, you, you know you can't announce a World of Warcraft expansion every year. I mean, you, you could, you could shouldn't though. Like then, like next year's BlizzCon is going to be Diablo Four over oh, Shadowlands. Yeah. It's going to be exactly the same as this year. Shadowlands will probably be out. <laughs> but don't worry. We've got Diablo Immortal. I mean, I mean Overwatch 2. Well, that's the other thing is Diablo Immortal. Was, was, was it supposed to be out by now? I don't know. Probably. Because I don't remember because, again, that dropped like a stone from BlizzCon, unsurprisingly. <laughs> like, it was, men- like, like, it was like, mentioned, but you'd have, you'd have to go looking for it. Dropped like a Hearthstone. <laughs> Bye, Hearthstone. Um, so it rolled behind you. It, it's quite yeah, so I, thought, it's fine. I thought there was a rat. Or something. It, it was my Hearthstone. Part two, Square Enix profits up 32% in the first half of the fiscal year. This is from James Batchelor over at Games Industry Biz, who writes, The latest financial results for Square Enix show the Japanese publisher has enjoyed a solid start to the financial year with growth across the board. There's a whole bunch in, like, billions of yen. I'm not going to read it. Digital entertainment, which encompasses via games, classes HD games, smart devices, and PC and MMOs, remains the publisher's biggest source of revenue, generating more than four times the net sales of Amusement, the next biggest division. Looking specifically at HD games, there was a year-on-year decline in net sales attributed to the launch of a major new title in the same period last year, as well as weaker sales of back catalogue titles. The biggest releases were Dragon Age 11 S, Echoes of an Elusive Age, Divinity Edition on Switch, and the Xbox One version of Final Fantasy X and X2 HD Remaster. Sales of the new Final Fantasy XIV expansion Shadowbringers and the increase in the number of subscribers this triggered increased net sales and operating income in the publisher's MMO sub-segment. Which is, that just backs up what we were just saying. You bring out yeah. a new expansion, things yeah. go up. it's like, well, it seems, again, I was having this conversation at um, BlizzCon, people who know these things, it seems like a lot of people who were playing WoW are sort of viewing Final Fantasy XIV as the hotness. Like, that's essentially the number two MMO in the world. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. here's the thing, right? I played WoW at launch, at beta at launch for a while. Um, I, I haven't played an MMO seriously for, but I have this weird 
ever since Square Enix started showing up to A3, I have this weird relationship with Final Fantasy XIV, where <laughs> they they do a thing, there's a trailer, they remind me Final Fantasy XIV exists, it looks really cool. And then I sit back while me and Keith are doing the reaction streams, and I go, and I think to myself, why don't I, why have I never played Final Fantasy XIV? And then inevitably the next day, I switch my PlayStation on, I go to the store, I go, oh, I'll download Final Fantasy XIV, and it's like, you need a subscription to play this. And I go, that's why I don't play it. <laughs> and then it's like, see you at the next E3, because I'll do exactly the same thing at E3 2020. I'll be like, oh, Final Fantasy XIV, why don't I play Final Fantasy XIV? Uh, I already have too many subscriptions going Final Fantasy XIV, I mean, that was announced before Final Fantasy XIII came. Yes. I mean, admittedly, that was before Realm Reborn, like when they completely fucked Yeah, it yeah, up. yeah. There's an awesome <laughs> no clip documentary about that as well. You should watch it if you're interested in video games at all. It's really, really fascinating. But the big news is Square Enix is working on a next gen action game, which is supposedly a new IP, which isn't mentioned in this story, but I've seen it mentioned elsewhere. Anyway, this is from Stephanie Nunley over at VG247. Square Enix is working on an unannounced next-gen action title according to a job posting. The Japanese recruitment page notes the company has openings in its first development division for the next-gen action title. Square Enix states in the listing prospective employees would be working on a next-generation action game experience that goes beyond the framework of existing action games. The first development division is responsible for Final Fantasy VII Remake, Kingdom Hearts 3, Romancing Saga 3 Remastered, and various other titles. Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> I don't imagine they're going to announce that until... Seven. No, it'll be a long time before we get the last one. Do you remember when Final Fantasy games used to come out like every like 18 months? <laughs> what, what, in the 90s? In the 90s. And now they come out every decade or so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those were the days. be cool if they were making it and... A new IP, but this could just as like first divi- first be. development division could just be we're making Final Fantasy sixteen. I'd imagine that they've got to be at a bare minimum storyboarding for Final Fantasy six. Yeah, like, that's got to be in pre-production. Yeah, like, that's almost a non-statement. Pretty much, it's like. I saw someone share a story on Twitter where it was like, the Square Enix are going to do more Kingdom Hearts stuff. And it's like, of course they are. <laughs> well, yeah. Just well, duh. I mean, it took them a decade to do the <clears throat> last one. Like, obviously. As long as you don't count Birth by Sleep in 367 or whatever it was called. Yeah. That, Kingdom Hearts. One of the reasons I didn't play Kingdom Hearts 3 earlier this year was because there was like, a billion different games in the timeline. And I was like, no, I'm good. Um, I have a thing here about Take-Two. They made all the money because they published Grand Theft Auto V. I yeah, feel like GTA that's all five, I GTA V continues to sell ridiculously well. G- GTA V surpassed 115 million units sold, so yeah. Take-Two made all the money in the world. Like, the attach rate for GTA V probably one-to-one with every new console sold. Here's a question for you. Do you think one day in the future, near future, far future, whatever, do you think Grand Theft Auto V is going to be the best selling game of all time? Um, what is the, currently the best selling game of all time? So right now it's on 115 million. So there's two games ahead of it. It's so beaten- around... That's I just around about the number of PlayStation 2s. Yeah. I just want to point out that the game behind it is Wii fucking Sports. And if you bought a Wii... Which was packed in... You Wii. got a copy of Wii Sports. So it's basically Grand Theft Auto V has outsold the Wii. Um, it's, it's, it's 115 also, million. Ter- it's it's in third. In yeah. It's in third. So but ahead of it is Tetris at 170 million. And Minecraft at 175 million. Is that just Tetris in general, like as an IP? Uh, or, or specifically the Game Boy version? Uh, initial release date June 6, 1984. Fucking hell. 1984. Okay, so it's all versions of Tetris. So that doesn't really count. Sales, figure in- sales figures include paid mobile downloads. 
Tetris was originally licensed and published by Spectrum Hollow by although other publishers of early ports of the I think it includes all the ports. So yeah, not necessarily no... all the yeah. like not necessarily like Tetris Effect or Tetris ninety nine, but Yeah, but nine eighty four is the NES version of Tetris, not the Game Boy version, which probably I'm guessing the one that sold them. Yeah, Tetris so, sold must... seventy million physical retail units, including thirty five million Game Boy version sales and a hundred million right. paid mobile game downloads. Which, whilst a lot, is not as many as GTA. I and mean, it's spitting hairs. It's like, yeah, it's it's Minecraft. How many Minecraft? How many? One hundred and seventy-six million. Okay, so ugh, probably not. All right, you're probably right. But I th- we all Minecraft. thought it would stop selling by now. <laughs> well, Minecraft is a generation Super Mario Brothers. It, no, no, I mean just GTA. Oh, GTA. Yeah. Yeah, like that's weird. This it's a weird one. When it's Red Dead Redemption Two design. came out, I was like, "It's gonna replace GTA." Like, I don't think it is. I just don't think it's got. No, I mean, it's definitely not now. At the time, I was like, "It's gonna replace GTA." Like in that NPD, GTA Five is always somewhere in the NPD. Like, yeah. and I thought when Red Dead Two came out, it's gonna phase out, and that one's gonna be the one that's always the NPD. That didn't happen. I, I didn't think that was going to happen for a minute. I just don't think it's as got the immediate universal appeal of a GTA Five. You know, I think for a lot of people, like Cowboys, just doesn't isn't really a thing to sort of hang its head on the same way. <laughs> hang its hat on. Let's see what you did there. Let's see what you did there. Uh, anyway, there are games out this week. Hooray! Including. A game I just mentioned. Romancing Saga 3 is coming out on November 11th. It's coming out on a Monday. That's super weird. It is out on PC, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, Vita, Android, and iOS. So basically, Hooray. you'll get it if you want anything. You want thing. Like, you want one of those things. Yeah. yeah. Wait, Vita? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Still happens occasionally. Okay. Uh, on November 12th, We've got Gollum coming out on PlayStation VR. On November 14th, Sparklight is coming out on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Bee Simulator is coming out on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. And Paranoia Happiness is Mandatory is coming out on PC. On November 15th, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is coming out on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield are coming out on Switch. Tokyo Ghoul Recall to Exist is coming out on PC and PS4. Astroneer is coming out on PS4. And Terminator Resistance is coming out on PC, PS4, and Xbox One in Europe. It's not coming out in North America until December. <laughs> Which I thought was really random. Yay. It's coming out on like December 3rd in North America. So, you haven't been here for a couple of weeks. I started to do this, this game that I started with uh, Mr. Moody when he was here, where we guess open critic scores of like games that are coming up in the week um so last week me and mr moody guessed a bunch of metacritic uh no sorry open critic scores um and we've we've made a game out of it where we try i track the score of like how many i get and how many my co-hosts is like a unit get and basically the rules are whoever's the closest to the open critic score at the time of recording gets one point if you guess the the, the score exactly you get two points and that's it that's all the rules <laughs> So last week's scores, and these are at the time of the recording, Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo Olympic Games 2020. Mr. Moody guessed that it would get a 75 on Open Critic. I guessed it would get a 69 because that's the sex number. Lol, lol, lol. And it turns out it actually it, it actually did get 69. <laughs> so my I mean, are you answer, proud of yourself? I'm, pr- I'm very proud of myself. The Mario and Sonic game got the sex number. Uh, so that was two points to me. I absolutely destroyed Moody this week. I'm not going to lie. Um, Need for Speed Heat. Mr. Moody guessed it would get a 51. I guessed it would get a 60. It actually got a 73. Uh, Jumanji, the video game, didn't get enough reviews to get an open correct average. Um, that was a video game? <laughs> yes. Mr. Moody guessed it would get a 35, and I guessed it would get a 58. Just Dance 2020 also didn't get enough reviews to get a, uh, an open critic average. Um... Planet Zoo, however, did. Mr. Moody guessed it would get an 83. I guessed it would get an 81. It got an 81. So after thoroughly humiliating myself in the first week of this game, 
<laughs> I won all the things, and I got two of the scores dead on, and I got five points to zero, which means that the current scores are now 1-1 one, one. <laughs> versus me versus my co-host. Parik, are you ready to play Guess the Open Critic scores? Yes. Because <laughs> there are three. I've got three that we, we're going to guess right now. So I like, guess the open critic scores. So you guess whatever you think the open critic average is going to be at the time of recording the podcast next week. Um, And then whoever gets, like I said, whoever gets closest gets a point. If you manage to nail it dead on, you get two points. So the first game, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. What what do you think that score is gonna um, average out to? Just so you know, because I explained this to Moody, but I didn't explain it to you. Is Open Critic amalgamates all three platforms into one score, which is why I use right. this instead of Metacritic. Um, is it gonna do the same with Sword? Like, is it gonna amalgamate those two? I don't know, but if you think of your Star Wars it, it, one, look at looking at the internet, it looks like it is so. Which if you do your Star Wars one, I'll look up Sun and Moon on. Yeah. Yes, um, it did it for Let's Go, so it'll do. It okay, for... it just sense like it's not going to get Doctor Point because one, you know. Yeah. The world Galarin, sword got Galarin Pony <laughs> to it. Well, sword um, got eighty-two instead of eighty-three. Yeah, no, whatever. Yeah. Uh, for Order, I'm going to say I don't know. So I'm thinking it's going to be in the high seven. I think it's going to disappoint mm. people. So I'm going to say 78. 78. Yeah. Well, I I write all these down on my phone beforehand. On a it depends. Notepad. That's the thing is I'm wondering if it would be a huge technical. Um, yeah, I mean. Um, yeah, that's the thing. If it's broken on launch, it's going to be. Um, no, I'm going to say 78. 78. I got 89. I think it's going to be big. That's 88. Hear me. There we go. Now, next one. You, you were more of an expert in this than me. Pokemon Sword and Shield. <laughs> I was trying to cheat and see what the Metacritic scores for every other Pokemon game. Um, well, it's going to be exactly the same as Pokemon. Uh, and I think most legitimate reviewers are not going to care. The Dexit thing. Dexit. Um, oh god is that really yeah thing? that's what it that's what it's called yeah the, the oh, fucking national no. Dexit thing. why in the net why <laughs> um so i'm gonna say in that it's gonna be perfectly competent and exactly the same as all the other fucking okay i think i got everything except the number there could you repeat that sorry number? i'm gonna say 85 85 cool yeah. i get it for an 81 and lastly Terminator Resistance. What do you think the open critic average is going to be? Is. Neither do I. That's what's funny. I don't know what this is. So <laughs> we don't know what it is, and it's a film type. So I'm going to say 41. 41. I got it down for 62. I don't know anything about the game, so I was going to do the same thing I did last week, where I did the sex number with Mario and Sonic. But then I'm You're not going to. Yeah, for so like, Terminator. Because it, because it happened this week, it's not going to happen again. And if it like, does... Is, do you think it's going to be as good as Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo Olympic like, Games? No, it's not going to be as good as Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo Olympic Games. So I want one. Like, So we'll see who pulls ahead next week. In the the weird little guess the open critic score of a game that I've started. Ow. Because I felt like we needed to have a discussion about games that were coming out. So I forced it with a game. How meta... That's going to do it for episode 182 of the Words Back Games cast. Keith? Keith? I could be Keith. <laughs> yeah, I'll be whoever you want me to be. Patrick, thank you very much for joining me. It's been a pleasure as always. I love having you around. It's just the best. Aww. Yeah, aw. Silly. Me. Silly girl. Don't, don't, no, it's fine. It's good. It's good. Love you. And everybody watching. Yeah, you're all right. Say bye, Perry. Bye-bye. Blame me for everything.